Welcome everyone to Epic Encounters. I hope you enjoy this week's message. I'm confident that the message from this series will meet you exactly where you are. Stay tuned for an epic journey. You are essential and your worship is essential. And thank you for worshiping with us through Facebook Live and YouTube. Uh, we thank you all that are here today. And we want to continue worship right now in the form of a tangible worship. Yes, we worship with our mouth, but after you speak or use your mouth, you have to put action behind that, behind what's spoken. And so we're asking that uh, we thank you for being able to worship with us vocally, but we're asking that you can worship with us monetarily right now. We are all presenting our sacrifice, our weekly sacrifice, our monthly sacrifice, maybe for some your, your, your bi-weekly sacrifice, and we appreciate you right now. There are five ways that you can continue to worship with us this afternoon. You can worship through GiveLify, through Cash App, through PayPal, our very own Epic Encounters app, which is available in the Google Play Store or in the Apple Store, and or you can worship with us uh, through uh, Venmo. But whatever avenue or whatever way that you present your sacrifice this afternoon, we are appreciative and we love you and God loves you for your obedience. We thank you. This afternoon, we want our speaker to come on up. He has a word from us. We appreciate uh, Elder Godfrey Quiachin and his faithfulness and his love for the word of God, his love for the word of God, his, his love for his family, his love for, for, the, for Asephus. We appreciate him and he's just good people. He, 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 he's, he's, he's good people, and I love him, and I love how God uses him. So come on up here, Elder, and give us a word, please. Amen, amen. Praise God. I have to say, I love, I love, I love the worship. I can't speak for anybody else. You know, the worship that we get is bar none. We're always ushered in. And yes, the lyrics today were amazing. You're more than enough. You're more than enough. I'm content in any circumstance. You're more than enough. If we can turn to our Bibles to Romans chapter 1, verses 26 through 32. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. <clears throat> and it reads as follows. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do they, not only do not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Our key scripture will be coming out of the 28th verse, and I'm going to read that from the King James Version. And it says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not covenant, convenient. Greek there is unapproved, that is rejected by implication worthless. And that's where we get our title today, Unapproved, rejectless, Rejected, and Worthless. I want you to understand that this series is Mythbusters, and I'm going to bust a myth right now. Typically, we ascribe being a reprobate mind or having a reprobate mind to individuals who have entered into a sexual relationship outside of the natural divine order of a natural born woman and man. But if you see all the attributes and the 
adjectives that are used from verse 29 to 32, and it ends with those who practice them. And in those, in those verses right there, we have unrighteous, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undeserving, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. So it is just not the alphabet group that can be turned over to a reprobated mind. There is a list right there of everyone who is not affiliated with the alphabet group, especially those who are not obedient to their parents. But now that we know what it means to be unapproved and how we get there, because we got to, we got to think about how we got this, this month. I mean, I'm telling you, the first person to kick off the series was pastor and after pastor preached last week I was like you were all in my sermon and he was like go ahead and preach it anyways and he said it was very clearly iniquity lawlessness leads to a reprobate mind so now we know that a reprobate mind is unapproved how can we assure that we won't be unapproved very simple second timothy 215 says study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's the King James Version. The New King James Version swaps out study for diligent. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And the Greek definition for study is to use speed, that is to make effort, be prompt or earnest. The English dictionary, Definition for diligent is characterized by steady, earnest, and educated, energetic effort. So we see here that in order for us to be approved, God gives us the opportunity to show him that we're approved. And that's by studying. He doesn't tell you to study. He says, Paul says, study to show yourself approved. In the New King James Version, it says to present yourself to God approved. That one, you don't have to be ashamed. And two, you can rightly divide the word of truth. When in the Greek, rightly divide means, pastor, to cut straight and dissect correctly. To cut straight and dissect correctly. And that is why it is important that we study. Because the word is an alive, powerful weapon that is surgical. And if you don't believe me, Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Ephesians 6.17 says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So now we know that when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you're also given a weapon. But in order to yield that weapon, we have to study because we have to know when we're going to use it in spiritual warfare or we're we going or we're going to be use it to become surgeons and dissect to the root of what's happening in our lives and those around us. And it's very key that we study to show ourselves approved. And I'm, we're going to dissect this word today. And this word that we're going to dissect is Matthew 7, 5, 17. Jesus says, do not think that I, ha I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That's Jesus speaking. Further on, when we get into studying, I'm going to throw some things out here, and I need you to study them on your own. There's these things. There's seven of them. They're called the dispensations. A dispensation is nothing more than an area of time that is, that is denoted by something that took plate, place from when it started, and when it finished, something else happened. There are seven of them. Jesus talks about the fifth one. What is the fifth one? It is the dispensation of law. The dispensation of law took place from the time of the exodus 
to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, almost 1,500 years they lived underneath the law. Mercy. So you might have made a mistake. There is no grace yet. So it's up to God whether or not he wants to kill you right on the spot. You have no opportunity to ask for repentance because repentance only came once a year when you brought your sacrifice. And then your sins got repented. It was that old phone plan where your minutes rolled over. And God said, that's enough of that. We're not having that. So he went to the, he went to the cross, rose from the grave. And today we find ourselves in the dispensation of grace. Again, personal study. Look it up for yourself so you can be empowered and impacted so you can dissect the word of, the, of truth correctly and make proper cuts when you're speaking to somebody. Now, here's the thing. We know what it means to be unapproved and how that happens. We just learned how, it, how we can be approved. But the kicker is, is for those who are unapproved, those who are walking around in a reprobated mind do not know that they're reprobated mind because they believe what they're doing lines up with the word of God so let's discuss these symptoms let's go to the law let's go to the prophet Moses in Deuteronomy 28 who is the law bringer remember Jesus said I didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets I come to fulfill them and here we have Moses in Deuteronomy 28 15 20 but it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all of these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city and cursed shall you be in the country. Makes no difference what country you live, what city you reside in. If you're turned over to a reprobated mind, you're cursed. 17, curse shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. 18, curse shall be the fruit of your body, your children, and the produce of the land, the increase of your cattle, and the offsprings of your flocks, your finances. Cursed shall you be when you come in, and cursed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will send on you cursings, confusion, and rebuke in all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doing in which you have forsaken me. And I'll leave you with this. If anyone underneath the sound of my voice is experiencing any of the above symptoms due to disobedience and not retaining the knowledge of God, which leads to iniquity, iniquity which causes lawlessness, you are living a reprobated lifestyle. And those symptoms are simply treated. And I urge you to go to the physician who has never given a wrong diagnosis, Jesus, who has never been accused or sued for malpractice, Jesus, and who has never lost a patient on the operating table. Jesus, don't be cursed. Amen. Thank you. Uh, for those that are online right now, we want to give you this opportunity. And for those that are here today, we want to give you this opportunity to also uh, take, allow this word to take root in you. All right. This is something that that is very much an on-time word and something we needed to hear. Um, I, I don't think it's any man's wish or any woman's wish to be rejected by God. And if modern day is a sign, we all have, uh, 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 all of us have insecurities when it comes to seeking out approval. But, you know, I think that we're looking for approval from the wrong source. And, and I think we all want to be approved. We all want to be recognized. Um, we all want to be told, you know, that a boy, that a girl. And, and that's what I love about the Lord Jesus Christ, why we serve him. Because in the end times, we, we're going to get a that a boy. We're going to get our approval when he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. So really, we want to use this opportunity for you to contact us and allow us to expand more about the next steps that need to happen. I know that some of us, we didn't know that we were living on the outskirts of God's will. We didn't know that we were playing with danger. We didn't know how serious our condition was. 
And that's why I appreciate elders speaking today, giving us context that if our lifestyle does not align itself with what God has called us to be, that, then we're going to be of most men miserable when the Lord calls us on the carpet for it. So I want to give us an opportunity. Some of us are still dealing with this. And let me just say this. The fight never goes away. You just learn how to duck more. All right. The fight never goes away. You literally start to get callous and and, 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 and you, you, you start to build up the ability to learn how to take a punch. Uh, see, when you're new to this, the challenges of the world, when you're new, when you're new to the fight of the enemy, some of us, we have, we've discovered very quickly that we have a glass jaw. But after the Lord deals with us and after the Lord steps in when it seems like we're treated unfairly or we're being bullied, that's when we realize that, no, there's, there's rules to this. There's a way to engage the enemy. There's a way to do warfare. And so we want to encourage you to talk to us at myepicencounter at gmail.com. This tribe is full of people that know how to fight. People that are very, uh, that are very familiar with warfare, spiritual warfare. And, and, and let me just say this, warfare uh, it goes easier when you have someone fighting with you versus when you're fighting on your when you're fighting alone and we don't want you to continue to fight alone because as long as you continue to fight alone you'll you'll, you'll isolate yourself and you'll continue to take your lumps you don't have to lose the fight not anymore and we want to encourage you to Get with us at myepicencounter at gmail.com. One of the ways that you can get recruited into God's army, into God's kingdom, into God's family is, is, is just to repent. And let me just say this. Your first steps in repentance is reaching out to us. But it goes a little bit further than that. We'll show you how to have a change of heart or change of mind about what's going on in our lives. The next thing that needs to happen is... Uh, a form of boot camp, if you will, and that is in the form of being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is your entrance. That is the entry exam into the kingdom is to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then after that has happened, and maybe for some of those that has happened and you need a fresh start, a fresh win, a fresh anointing, well, we want to encourage you to open your heart up, to open your spirit up, your, excuse me, your soul up to be filled with his spirit. There's a way that we can change the direction, the course or the trajectory of our lives right now. Partner with us, contact us at myepicencounter at gmail.com or text the numbers, three, text my epic to the numbers 31996. Keep playing, Josh. And for those that are still looking and, and, and wondering, well, how, how, how else can we partner? How else can we continue to, to, to do the work of God? Well, this is an opportunity right now. In order to fight a war, it takes resources. In order to fight a battle, it takes resources. There are five ways that you can be a blessing to this spiritual uh, warfare that comes on right now. It's fought in the spirit, but it's also fought in the natural. And you could help us fight in the natural by being a blessing with your giving. There are five suggestions on how to give. You can give via Venmo, Givelify, Cash App, PayPal, our very own Epic Encounters app available on the Google Store and in the Apple Store. But we thank you for tuning in this week and, and, and just logging on and being with us. We hope to see you soon in person. Definitely would like to talk to you as soon as possible about next steps. God bless you. Hello, we want to thank you for watching this segment. We would like to hear more from you. Please follow us and connect with us via social media outlets. We want to offer you an opportunity to partner with us. We can do more together. Below is the information on how you can be part of bringing this message from our community to yours. And before you leave, take our model with you. More compassion, fewer complaints.